What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and I'm super grateful that you decided to take a few minutes of your busy day to spend them here with me. So today we are checking out one of the latest phones from Kubot called the Kubot X19. So when I first got this phone about a week and a half ago, I said that the phone is too expensive for what it is because the phone used to be $160. Well, today you can actually buy this phone for about $120 and I feel that for $120 this phone actually makes sense. This is one of the few phones that doesn't have a notch as well. So on the front here we have a 5.93 inches IPS screen. We also get the great looking colors, we get great viewing angles and the 1080p resolution. So definitely a nice looking screen that gets bright enough so you can actually see it outside and that's definitely important. Now, the phone is being powered by the MediaTek Helio P23 and um, we've seen this CPU for a lot of Chinese devices, but I don't personally mind this um, processor because the performance is very similar or somewhat better than the Snapdragon 625. Aside from that, the phone has 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage and that internal storage is also expandable um, through an SD card and that means that you can install apps on the SD card. In my opinion, the biggest downside for this phone is the fact that the frame and the back are made out of plastic, so the phone doesn't feel or look as premium as um, other devices um, that you can find for around $120 to $150. So if you don't use a case with this, the back will be full of scratches in no time. Talking about the back, um, on the back there we have a 16 megapixel camera and supposedly a 2 megapixel camera. Now, I don't believe that the second camera works or it doesn't do anything because if you take any pictures with the portrait mode, well, the portrait mode pictures are basically a circle um, in the center that's um, in focus and everything outside the circle is blurred out. So the bokeh mode or the portrait mode doesn't actually look good. For all the other pictures, um, I think they look good enough for the price of the phone. Um, the HDR works decent enough, not spectacular, but decent. And um, as soon as you don't have enough light, the pictures become a bit grainier. Now, they don't look horrible. I've seen phones, some um, more expensive phones that take um, worse pictures in low light. But um, for 120 bucks, I feel that the phone does good enough. On the back there we also have a fingerprint scanner and once again the fingerprint scanner works but it takes about half a second from the time that you press the fingerprint scanner for the screen to come on. If you don't want to use the fingerprint scanner of course the phone supports face unlocking but the face unlocking doesn't work well um, if you don't have plenty of light um, around you so if you're in a dark room the face unlocking is not gonna work. So the face unlocking is done through the front facing camera and talking about the front facing camera to the right um, hand side of the front facing camera we also have a little notification light um, something that we don't usually see with a lot of phones as well. The picture quality from that 8 megapixel front facing camera isn't bad if you have plenty of light but um, once again as soon as you don't have enough light the pictures become a bit grainier and a bit blurrier but overall for a phone around $120 as I said before I'm pretty decent. At the bottom of the phone we have the holes for the speaker, the holes for the microphone and the USB-C charging port. So this phone supports fast charging and charging the phone from 0 to 100 takes about an hour and 45 minutes to 2 hours so definitely not, uh, not long considering that we have a 4000 mAh battery inside. But um, the speaker at the bottom here, which is the only speaker that um, we have, doesn't sound spectacular. It sounds kind of tiny. And um, this is a quick sample so you can hear how the speaker sounds. Since I was talking about the 4000 mAh battery earlier, well, the battery life from this device is good but not spectacular. So you will definitely make it through an entire day and out of that get uh, between 7 to 9 hours of screen time. But from a 4000 mAh battery, I was personally expecting a bit more, but definitely good enough and uh, you will make it through an entire day no matter what you do with the phone. The phone comes with Android 8.1 right out of the box and it's supposed to get updated to Android 9 in the near future, but who knows if that's gonna happen or not. But um, what I can tell you is the fact that the phone got an update today and it was a fairly big update, so definitely nice to see that the company is pushing out um, updates. The launcher is very close to stock Android, just as we've seen in the past from other Kubo devices and that means that there isn't anything holding the phone back. With the MediaTek P23, as I said before, the performance is pretty good, so most usual apps will work good, like the Facebook app, scrolling through your feed works decent enough, Chrome works good if you are zooming in, zooming out, or whatever you're doing um, with Chrome, and uh, no issues with the YouTube app either. Since this isn't exactly a gaming phone, some heavier games aren't gonna do that well. For example, PUBG, you may notice some skipped frames here and there, but for most other games, the phone does perform really, really well. 
So performance wise I'm very very happy with this device. We also get a pretty decent GPS unit inside it and it takes the phone only a couple of seconds to find your location and once it finds your location it doesn't seem to lose it and using any navigation app works good as well. As for sensors we have all the sensors that you would find in a much more expensive device. Connectivity wise um, we get 4G connectivity and dual band Wi-Fi but unfortunately we don't have um, NFC which was kind of um, to be expected for about $120. The call quality is also pretty good and the speaker on top here gets um, fairly loud so no complaints about that. As for the speeds over the 4G network and the dual band Wi-Fi those are really good as well. So to quickly conclude this video, the biggest downside for this phone is the fact that the frame and the back are made out of plastic and it doesn't give you that um, premium feel that we get from other devices like the Xiaomi Redmi Note 5 or the Note 6 and uh, so on. So that is definitely the biggest downside. It's nice that we don't get a notch because a lot of people don't like notches, the screen looks really nice, the cameras are kind of average, the battery life is also kind of um, average. So a lot of things about this phone are average and for $120 I feel that the phone makes sense but if you can spend down 20 50 bucks more you can probably get something better. Alright guys hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did like it press that like button don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.